you know, on, on face value, I don't think it's wrong to say that other countries are, you know, objectively not a mate, like, you, you just like in terms of safety, socioeconomically. Um, but again, like, I don't think that should be an argument to say no immigrants from any of these places. I don't think that a country being bad should say you should come here. Like, I'm not in favor of something that says, you know, diversity lottery, because um, I think there are better ways to do things. But with that, yeah, I think it's just kind of been blown out of proportion racially. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm still up here in Montreal and I've got some special videos. It's not so much news as I normally, you know, go on the ground and investigate stuff and it's not so much me talking about news, but I've been talking with some really interesting people. Like yesterday I spoke with Bunty, we talked about tw Twitter censorship, and today I'm joined by a roaming millennial. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. Not a lot of visitors up here in Montreal, so anytime anyone does come, I'm grateful for it. Uh, it's Montreal's a lot of fun. Everybody speaks French mm -hmm. and you have poutine, so right. hopefully Just poutine. winning all around. Uh, we were talking about a lot of really interesting stuff just right off the get-go, the alt-right, mm -hmm. per perceptions of politics, civic nationalism. I guess the first thing, do you want to you introduce yourself? Sure, so I'm Roaming Millennial. I have a channel on YouTube. Uh, I've been doing the whole political commentary thing for about a year and a half. I've uh, been fortunate enough that I've been able to gather an audience talking about things that I'm passionate about. And I'm going to be starting with CRTV uh, this month, actually, with a new show. But yeah, thanks thanks for coming and cool, talking yeah. to me. I mean, I don't know. It feels kind of crazy driving all, all the way to Montreal to do something <laughs> like this. But I'm a traveler. I love driving around. And I don't know. I, I think there's like certainly an overlap in the kind of stuff we do. My, you do political commentary. Mine's news and some commentary. I've been doing more commentary lately. But I don't know. You talked a lot about, it, uh, about a lot of interesting things. I actually thought you were alt-right. That, that is a very, very common misconception, actually. <laughs> so no worries there. It's happened to me more than a few times. But you actually were willing to, you know, listen to me after thinking that, which is something that most people uh, don't grant me the courtesy of. So I appreciate that. that. I mean, I've, I'm victim of the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think it's because Millennial Woes is, is like an alt-right creator. Yeah. And so you're mo roaming millennial, and then when, you know, millennial, if you, if you have millennial in your name, you must be one person, I guess. I don't know, I, I just, it, like, I'm not someone who follows a, t a lot of, like, political commentary, alternative media kind of stuff, a little bit, like, I knew who you were, but I've seen some of your videos, and so I just, I, I fell victim to the same thing people fall victim to with my content. They mm -hmm. assume that simply because I'm willing to talk about something, or because I'm critical of something, it must mean I support the other thing. Right. Or this idea that there's only one option, or there's only two options, like you're either alt-right or you're... A social justice warrior. Yeah, exactly. Right. I was going to say alt-left, but I don't know if that's like, you know... Actually, I've used alt-left before and people have been mad at me for it. But yeah. But I, I like it, personally. I, I actually had uh, Richard Spencer tweeted at me saying, saying alt-left, Some like he, he said it wasn't fair to the alt-right to say alt-left because it implies that the alt-right is violent. And I'm like, well, there's like... You know, I wouldn't say they're not violent, but I think Antifa is engaged in significantly more street violence. Definitely. Yeah, and so I get what he was saying, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, ultimately, like, just because they decided to call themselves alt-right doesn't mean you can't use that to as a reflection of a, a, a group on the opposite end. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also a misconception that people are like, simply by saying alt-left, you're equating the two. It's right, like, no, no you're really just different. saying it's the alternate left. And actually, I've used it before, too, because... You know, I'm someone on the right, and a lot of times when I talk about things like social justice warriors, some of my liberal or left-wing viewers, of which I have actually a sizable amount, will say things like, why are you always attacking the left? And so when I use the term alt-left, it's kind of my own small way of at least acknowledging that, hey, I know people like Antifa don't represent everyone who's, you know, left of Ayn Rand or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So do you consider yourself left? Um, I think... Um, Politically, I'm right, but when it comes to you know social issues, like I'm pro gay rights. I've I've always been a supporter of, of gay marriage and things like that. I'm a lot of people would think I'm I'm quite, I you know I don't want to use the word progressive because it has a lot of connotations nowadays, but um, you know socially I'm very libertarian. So that that makes it a little bit harder to classify left versus right in those areas. And then you, people get, people don't understand libertarian doesn't mean big L libertarian, which right. is usually like right leaning anarcho capitalist. But libertarian, just the word itself, just is anti-authoritarian, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, very much so. And and especially when it comes to things like, um, you know, the, the trans issue. I was recently, I, I've done videos about people like Riley Dennis, Miley Stewart, Milo Stewart, sorry. And I, I don't have a problem using someone's pronouns if I'm, you know, engaging them with them in what I hope would be respectful conversations and stuff like that. And, you know, I've had a lot of people on the right attack me for that and say that I, I'm left-wing for that. So, you know, it, I, I'm not going to attempt to 
classify it's, it's, myself. It's like the... It, this is what it is. If I'm willing to have a conversation with you and someone thinks you're alt-right, I'm alt-right too. Right. Like, neither <laughs> of us are alt-right, uh, but it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like, I had... I was, you know, I was mentioning earlier, I, I've had more than one publication call me alt-right. And I have to get in there right away. Okay, can I just explain to everybody? Alt-right, according to Wikipedia, is a direct... It's directly correlated to white nationalism. Mm-hmm. Like, this idea of a white ethnostate, of which I am not allowed to be a member of. Mm-hmm. Like, okay? Because there's a meme, because I say it so often that I'm mixed. But a- actually, you know, an even funny th- uh, a funny, a funny note, which is I just found this out, and this is funny, that in the Discord leaks from Unicorn Riot about the Charlottesville organizers, they flat out said, Tim Pool is mixed, fucking dropped. They were moved, like, like, they were listing live streams, and they were like, Tim Pool, we're not going to share his stream because he's... A white genocide or something. Mongrel <laughs> mud, I think, are the preferred terms to describe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what are you about? Like you, you, you mentioned this already. You, you've done videos about like gender. You should mm-hmm. do about the UN. Yeah. yeah. Do you like? So, um, I, I consider myself a civic nationalist. So, and I, and I am someone who is very much libertarian in my views of like government and you know social issues as well. And I think when. Um, when, when we have people like uh, the alt-left or the alt-right, to me, the reason why I have made videos about both of those groups and why I, you know, um, ideologically oppose both of those groups is because they're collectivists and authoritarian. So pretty much I am, I'm not for that. And I've made videos about different things, things like, uh, I guess social issues is kind of what's, I think, most interesting to a lot of people who might be, you know, our age, who are, who are seeing that their peers, their maybe their significant others are very emerged in this social justice ideology. So that's kind of what's interesting me a lot nowadays, but increasingly we're also seeing these racial tensions boil up, or at least people who are trying to paint racial tensions as boiling up. Whether or not it's actually happening in real life, I think is debatable. Um, but, but I'm someone who very much believes that if you, you know, if you carry your own weight if you have similar values or, or anything like that. I have, I, I would like to you know, be able to call you a fellow citizen. So I think the idea that race isn't important is something that is offensive to both the alt-left and the alt-right. Yeah. I, I'm always just like, if you're nice to me, I'm nice to you. Right. You know, like you could, you could be a deplorable, you could be racist, and I can t- completely disagree with you. And as so long as you're not, there's like a few things, like you're not beating people in the streets, you're not violent, you're not trying to harm others. I'm just like, okay, like, we're cool. Like, mm-hmm. let's just not get into the violence. And I'll oppose you, you know, if you've got ideas that are, like, if you if you want to push politics that would create a bad future, you sure, I'll fight against that, but I'm not going to punch you in the face. I think that's kind of productive. Yeah. But I think it's safe to say then, uh, literally, based on what you just said, both sides don't like you. Right. That I think that's actually a very fair, and, the, you know, the, the amount of, like, death threats that I get from either group kind of depends on what video I've released most recently. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I've, I've been labeled alt-centrist before. <laughs> I, what that radical even means, centrist. I don't know. Yeah, Yeah. I, I made a joke, like, when is the radical center going to rise up in the streets <laughs> and, like, you know... We've seen, we've seen the regressive, the SJWs, we've seen the, the alt-right in the streets, there's, like, violence. Where's the radical center? It's like, I think it's... Uh, so why, why does the, I, I feel like there, there might be an obvious reason, but I was going to ask you, why do you think the alt-right doesn't like you? Specifically? Well, what, one of the things is because I am mixed race, which as you've seen firsthand, they're not a fan of. Yeah. Uh, you know, not only am I a mixed race, but I'm also someone who doesn't see the problem, any problem with mixing race. So, you know, like I've in a relationship now with someone who is also mixed, but a different mix, and I see no issues with that. I don't have a problem having, you know, mixed race children. Um, and just conceptually, I don't want to live in a country where they value something like race over individual merit, you know, character, education, and things like that. I think there are much more important things about people than what their phenotype is. And, you know, personally, I, I, the alt-right, they always, when they're talking about me, say like, oh, you have no identity because you're mixed race. So you think that no one else should have any identity. Like, no, I have tons of identities, right? You know, a lot of identities that I'm proud of. It's just, you know, my race, something that I've had no control over is not not really one of them and yeah. there's so much more that makes people interesting that i i just don't see the the need to focus on it you know it's weird uh i i grew up on the south side of chicago and my race never mattered mm-hmm. like it I, I never even occurred to me that i was mixed it was never a thing i was just some kid i right. had a hispanic friend i had a filipino friend i had a polish friend uh, i lived in a polish neighborhood i had a lot of polish friends and then it wasn't until around like occupy wall street kicked off i went to new york and all of a sudden everyone was asking me and it's been on the left what are you? Mm-hmm. And then I had to like define what I was. 
I was actually told by these people, if I don't explicitly identify as Asian or as white, like I don't get a foot in any, like my arguments are meaningless entirely. And I've had people tell me that I can't claim that I've been di discriminated against because of my race, because I don't publicly identify as a Korean man. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I just don't understand the logic of, of either side. No, it does. It, it, it absolutely doesn't make sense. And I've, I've um, done videos and I've actually, at one point, th these were comments that were made right after each other. Someone, a black person, wrote as a comment on my video about how people of color are not, you know, actively uh, press in the United States like a lot of them like to claim. I think there's doubt that, no doubt issues in black communities, but I don't, I don't think that just saying, you know, oh, it's all racial oppression is really an answer. So I, I had someone writing on that video, oh, you know, a, a white person, you sh shut up, what do you know about this? And then coincidentally, right under that comment, there was another comment posted on my um, uh, video about Charlottesville, which I, I talked about how I didn't think uh, white nationalism was, uh, you know, the, the correct way to defeat the social justice warriors. Someone saying that, oh, some mixed mongrel, what do you know about identity? Shut up, right. So, I mean, the two opposite ends of the political spectrum, both dismissing me because of my racial heritage, while at the same time not at all addressing what I'm actually saying. So then, it's it, the crazy question is, like, why would people call you alt-right? I think the people who call me alt-right don't actually listen to me most of the time. Like, there was actually, do you know Right Wing Watch? Yeah. So they actually did a piece about um, how YouTube became, you know, how white supremacy became YouTube famous or something. And so someone sent me this and there's this big thumbnail that says how white supremacists became YouTube famous and on it there's people like, uh, I don't I don't know if, yeah, Millennial Woes was there and um, you know, some people from Red Eyes TV was there and up in the corner there's me, <laughs> mixed girl with my, my little pigtails. And so yeah, there, I think that was just a big case of the the person actually not um, you know not listening to what I was saying. They saw that I did a video with Tara McCarthy, and it didn't matter that we were in a debate arguing different positions. The fact that oh you've spoken with them, boom, all right. And you know what's really funny? Isn't the guy who runs right wing wa right wing watch a white dude? Yeah. Isn't there something weird about a white guy telling a mixed race person that you're the racist? I think a little bit so. Unfortunately, the irony seems to be lost on them. It's so weird. Yeah. Okay, you're Canadian. Yes. Is, is, it, is it weird that we, like there are a lot of, uh, maybe not a lot of, but there's a handful of prominent Canadian personalities, Gavin McInnes, mm -hmm. Lauren Southern, you. Crowder. Crowder. Wow, yeah. he's Canadian too? Yes, he is. His mom's actually French Canadian as wow. well, like my mom. So. What, it, it's, how come you guys are so influential in the, in the States? Like, you're Canadian. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I don't know. It is strange. And I noticed that as well. You know, someone was commenting about how many like Canadian commentators there are. And I think part of it is that anyone who is more libertarian leaning in Canada, we feel more of the, the urgency of why these issues are so important because I kind of, n no offense to Canada, but right now with a lot of things, especially going on in Ontario, not so much in Quebec, Quebec has its own issues, but we, we see a lot of the, you know, the gender pronoun issues, the anti-free speech issues um, that we see in the States, they're kind of at the next step in Canada, right? Canada, now the laws we have now are sort of what I fear might happen in the States if people aren't careful. So that's why I think a lot of us Canadians who um, are kind of interested in this, these issues are really targeted more towards Americans saying, please guys, like use us as a warning, don't go down this path. This is a this is a good opportunity to sort of segue into like Act Two, yeah. Because you mentioned some things in Canada are like a step ahead of the U.S., mm -hmm. but New York City at least has the gender law. There's the debate. I think I think Ontario passed the law mm -hmm. a while ago, but uh, the law is essentially like protecting um, gender genders and yeah. things like that. And New York City, granted, it's not like a state or anything, but New York City itself and many other jurisdictions protect all concept of gender, right? So I did a video about this. New York has 31 genders. There's also, uh, the provision itself is just about self-image, meaning you can literally make up a gender. A lot of young people have been doing that. But not to get into gender, but just talk about the sustainability of these practices of, uh, I don't know what you just, you'd call it, but we were, talking about this, we were talking about this a little bit off camera before we started, that when you pass a law to protect women specifically, and then later you pass a law that says anyone can identify as a woman or any other gender, you basically have just written over that first protection of women because you've basically said anyone can be a woman. Mm -hmm. I think it's, 
inherent in a lot of these laws like the gender law or even practices like Harvard, I think it was saying that students can now self-identify for race. Um, a lot of it is the inherent insustainability and self-contradiction of like this postmodernist, almost nihilist attitude, right? If everything and if, if gender is everything, but also nothing, how can we have gender protections, right? Yeah. I mean, if, if race does and doesn't define you and is and isn't something that is like biological how how are we supposed to have things like affirmative action it does it doesn't make sense and i think these the people who are so in favor of these measures social justice warriors i know that's an awful term that's like cliche now but for lack of a better word to call them um i, I think they're people who kind of have the this like this this ideology that almost wants to eat itself right i mean like you can't you you like you said you can't have a gender protections for women and 50-50 pay parity when there's infinite genders, yeah. right? And you can't you can't decry toxic masculinity and the influence of of men if gender doesn't mean anything, right? And if if, bi if gender isn't biological. You know you know that meme where it's like the guy sweating and he's going to press one of the two buttons. Yes. There was one a while ago and it said uh, there's, there's a gender wage gap and the other one said gender is a social construct or something. Like there's a mm -hmm. bunch of things like that. And it, it it's it's the weirdest thing for me. Like, I have friends who consider themselves, like, non-binary, agender, and things like that. I respect them. Like, mm -hmm. I, if, like, like I said, if you're nice to me, I'm nice to you. I'm not going to tell someone they're right or wrong. That's why I do journalism. I mostly just try to, like, back off from the hardcore politics because there's so much I don't understand or know. Yeah. But what I can say is, look, I'm not going to argue whether or not you are, you are or are not third gender or whatever. I'm simply going to point out the logical conclusion that if, you know, Vice, for instance, said they want 50-50 pay parity, if they want... 50-50 men and women at all levels of the company. That's literally discriminating against 29 other recognized genders in New York City. You know, New York City recognizes, you know, like uh, Butch, uh, um, one of the gender blender is a, is a recognized yeah. gender. Is Vice going to then create a space for those recognized genders and when it gets to the point of infinite genders? But you know, not only that, I don't want to single out gender because religion and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, politics have this space too. I mean, religion is technically infinite as well. What if you just, what if you just said your religion was, I believe chickens are the embodiment of the Lord, in which case I must have a chicken on my head at all times. Like would Starbucks be required to allow you to wear a chicken on your head while you work? That's a health hazard. Right. Like, yeah. How do you, and, and, and never mind just that without even going into, um, you know, hypotheticals, we, we see that there's already this kind of I guess disconnect between the amount of religious liberties we give different groups between I think what Islam and what Christianity are are both afforded. I'm I'm not sure if this really applies so much in the U.S. right now, but I think definitely um, in, in places like the U.K. or here in Canada there is a disconnect. Right in Canadian schools, there are actually times where the imam is able to come in and they you know on Fridays able to I guess give give a service because you know Friday is the the holy day in the Islamic faith. In in they're allowed to do that in a public school. Um, how can we say that that's all right, but at the same time, you know, Christians can't can't pray in school or can't talk about their religion, right? And I'm someone who I honestly do believe religious freedom is a good thing, but when we're actually bending our laws and our rules of life to accommodate someone's religion, I think that kind of goes past the point of freedom of religion and you're protecting religion as an institution, which is not the same thing. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of strange because, you know, uh, a lot of atheist groups, a lot of left-leaning liberal groups mm -hmm. have tried to get symbols of Christianity removed from courthouses, from schools, saying that, you know, prayers shouldn't be happening in public schools, things like that. And to an extent, I agree. I'm like, sure, if we have freedom of religion, then we shouldn't enforce one religion. But at the same time, we do see the... It's not the same people. Right, But it's right. considered, like, the same faction defending the rights of some religions. Not others, though. What blows my mind is I grew up in, a, I grew up in, a, in Chicago, and it was, you know, around me where the, the, the liberals, the Democrats, sang, the evangelical right is, is homophobic, and that's wrong. And it's their religious ideology. The, the people who were like Bible thumping said the Bible says it's wrong to be homosexual. Well, the Quran to an extent talks a bit about this as well, but Islam also finds homosexuality to be wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how the group that when I grew up was defending the LGBTQ community is now on the side of an Abrahamic religion that is anti those things. You know what I mean? No, definitely. And I think there is this this willingness to overlook all of the bad things about Islam um, in, in, in favor of protecting this, what they see as an oppressed group. 
brown people, or often brown immigrants, right? And I think there's this hierarchy of oppression, this hierarchy of who does and does not deserve their protection in their minds. And I think, unfortunately, what we're seeing is that a lot of these activists are favoring the, I guess, the rights and protections of Islamic groups, unfortunately, over over the LGBT community, which I think, you know, does have legitimate grievances against the religion of Islam, you know, very much so like it does against uh, extremist sects of Christianity, absolutely. And it's, an, it, it's annoying for me personally how there's the, you know, this like blind eye, like, oh, you know, all those stoning of gays and stuff, we're just not gonna, not gonna look at that. The fact that, a, you know, a good amount of British Muslims think homosexuality should be illegal, you know, not gonna, not gonna pay attention to it, pretend it doesn't exist. Would you consider yourself well-traveled? I, I would think so. I would definitely like to travel Roman more, Roman. but yeah. I, I, I wonder so. if, if that's one of the issues, because I find that a lot of people who are on the left, as we call it, the left, I yeah. hate using left and right. Yeah, I but agree. But like this group, they tend to be people hyper-focused on the United States, and they're not conscious of the external world. Mm-hmm. And it's not absolute. Obviously, there are some people, yeah. you know. And then when I, when I think about people on the right, when I talk to people on the right, they're very concerned about foreign policy. I, you know, a lot of people on the right criticized Trump. Rightly so, when he fired 59 Syria, missiles at Syria. Yeah. You had the commando raids in Yemen. And then you hear a lot of people on the right talk about the protests in Iran. They talk about uh, savagery, as they call it. I don't mean to say that the Middle East is entirely savage, but there are certain things that are certainly Absolutely. savage. There's a lot of terrorism there. There's the people being thrown off roofs. And, we, and I, I wonder if the issue is the people on the left just aren't focused on the rest of the world. Is that my perception? Am I in a bubble? Like, what do you think? No, I think there's, there is, at least in my opinion, a certain sense to that because I know, and this happened um, when we had the whole women's march thing. You know, women were, were marching for a whole bunch of things, you know, you know, against Trump, for abortion rights, for pay equality, just like you know, women's issues. And, you know, I think a, a lot of people on the right did find that hypocritical that, you know, there was such an outcry over someone like Trump being elected from these feminist groups, yet, uh, you know, injustices in Saudi Arabia, you know, very much go go unnoticed by, or at least they don't make it a, a large focus. And just as in the Middle East, you know, things like female genital mutilation, even in our own countries, right? I mean, in the UK and even in the US, this is unfortunately happening at, at, a, at a growing rate. These feminist groups don't really talk about that. Now, um, Kat Black, who I'm not sure if, if you know, but she's a, a little bit, yeah. yeah, social justice creator on YouTube, who I do follow, very smart, very articulate, even though we see things from a different perspective. But, you know, she, she addressed this and was like, hey, just because there are bad things happening, Overseas doesn't mean we can't uh, can't focus on making our own lives better. It doesn't mean that we ignore the problems here. And it's like, yeah, granted. But at the same time, I don't think you can honestly, in good faith, paint the United States as this you know racist, sexist, xenophobic country when we see what's actually happening in the rest of the world. And that's not to say the U.S. is perfect, but when we're throwing out these words like tyrannical yeah, and misogynistic, seriously. I just think you know some perspective does help. I visited South Korea. And one thing I heard over and over again was that they're very, very racist. Mm. That South Koreans, there's a, they have a very large percentage of people who are ethno-nationalists. There's like a Korean supremacy thing. That's right. And, you know, the people who, talk, who I talked to there and some of the stuff I read was like, it was born out of World War II that Japan was very much on the racial supremacy side with the mm-hmm. Axis powers. And then oppressing the Koreans made the Koreans uh, essentially, like there's a backlash where they're like, you think you're better? Well, we're better. And mm-hmm. so they retain some of this. Right. You know... I hear there was a commercial, like, uh, I'm bringing up Southeast Asia on, uh, on purpose. There was a commercial, I think it was in China, where they put a black man in a washing yeah, machine. Yeah, the laundry machine, yeah. So yeah. I see that stuff, and when, when people on the, on the far left here say, oh, you, you know, minorities can't be racist, like, only white people can be racist, I'm like, what about that commercial? Like, right. that was decried as racist, right? No, absolutely, and I think what, um, what people on the left don't really understand is that the United States... For all of its faults, again, not saying it's perfect, is one of the least racist countries on the planet. It's one of the only few countries where you can have people um, of all different races kind of moving and living together. And, you know, as someone who's lived in China, China is very much, um, yeah, they're like, they're, they're ethno-nationalists and they are, um, you know, kind of xenophobic, especially toward toward other races. You know, I went to school uh, in Shanghai and I had a, a friend who was a migrant who was black. And, you know, the, the stares and the, you know, the things that were said about him just by these Chinese people who had never before seen a black people, yeah, uh, you know, if, if, if you think that something like, I don't know, what's fake racist, something like Dove commercials are racist, then no, you need to come to China yeah, yeah. and see what, what actually is. But I think, yeah, it just comes from a, a lack of, I guess, context. And, you know, they, they see Asians as these um, oppressed minorities when if you, you actually go to Asia, it, it's very, very different, right? I mean, Asians would not be... A, 
as opening and welcoming as the United States has been where things reversed. How was how 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 would you rate the like you as a mixed person in China? Mm -hmm. it, was there anything were they racist towards you at all? Um, well, I I think it's pretty interesting because in in China I'm pretty much just regarded as a white person. Whoa. Yeah, um, because like uh, Chinese people look at me generally and just think I'm entirely white, yeah. so they just see me as like a guaylo. Um, in Hong Kong, it's a little bit different because there is, um, you know, there's been a larger influence in, from Westerners for a longer time, and there are like um, mixed race people. I'm not going to say they're common, like they're this huge majority, but it's um, it's not uncommon to see someone who's mixed. So I think there, um, there, there is just kind of this like, oh, you know, you're, you're half white and stuff like that. But I mean, even then, I am kind of seen as like someone who's like not local even though i you know grew up there is it is it better or worse like in the united states mm -hmm. like I, I can speak from my experience well i, I never mattered like yeah my race was it, well so i grew up um in asia but then when i was 12 i moved to canada and that was my first time living in the west and you know it was funny like like you said in my race never mattered you know i was never I mean, yeah, I mean, I think what kind of made me different was the fact that I was coming from Asia, but like racially, n you know, no one, no one talked about it. And, you know, I'm not going to say I didn't get picked on because, you know, school, absolutely, but I wasn't picked on for my race. And so kind of like you, what you were saying, it wasn't until I got a little bit older until I actually got into university where um, it, it started to kind of matter a little bit more. And I know when, um, when I... I did my freshman year at USC, University of Southern California, not South Carolina, and uh, they actually put me in the Asian ghetto. What? <laughs> yeah, I was in, because um, they actually have kind of segregated housing at, at USC. You know, there's like a black floor, there's a Muslim building, there's a gay building, and I actually was in a room with all other Asian people. Um, I didn't wait, ask wait, for that. Wait, wait, like, I'm not kidding. In, at an institutional level, they do that? Like this yeah, you can apply for the black floor. They don't call it the black floor, but it's the black floor. Uh, the the rainbow floor, I think, is what they call the gay floor. The the Muslim building, yeah, they absolutely segregate the housing, and um, I was put into an entirely. Eight, you know what? Maybe it was just a fluke, but I know for sure. Like of the eight other people in my suite, they were all Asian, and so I actually requested to be moved because I didn't I didn't go to you know Los Angeles to just live in you know little Hong Kong, which I, is what I was in. I just I just want to say it. I think. The, per the, the I, I hate using left and right, but the per the perceived left majority faction, the perceived right, I think they're all racist. Yeah. I think that at like the the moderate level where there's regular human beings who are conservative, who are liberal, they're not. Mm -hmm. But there are these weird fringe groups, you know, on the far right and the far left who have some weird, you know, for what it's worth, you can say the alt-right's not very large, but the media hyper-focuses on them. Right. They're kind of and, magnified more than... Yeah. The, yeah. And it's, it's like, sure, everyone calls them racist... And there are people there who call themselves a race realists, but the left is racist. Right, you know? and you know, the, that's the thing. Like, people ask me why I'm opposed to the alt-right, and you know, sometimes I've had alt-right people who are following my channel be like, oh, what, you, you don't like the alt-right, you're not alt-right, why not? And it's like, all the arguments that I've made against the alt-left, yeah, change the word black to white, and you have the exact argument why I'm not someone who's part of the alt-right. Because to me, they are just, you know, the same side, like two sides of the different, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and, and it's, I, it's not horseshoe theory. But it's more just like you're both authoritarian, racial, collectivists. And I think it's also important to point out, because I've had the same thing with people commenting on my stuff, we're specifically talking about like the furthest of the fringe. Right, right. Alt-left, like, alt-right. Yeah. There, there are some people I know that claim they're alt-right, but they're so tame relative to the perception of like this more like scarier fringe version of the alt-right. Like mm -hmm. people in Charlottesville, not every single one of them was a no, lunatic, yeah. you know, but they're, but when, when we're talking about the crazy people, we're talking about like the craziest, the craziest. I, I, I mean to say, you know, I say this because I know people who are consider themselves anti-fascist that have been for a long time. And I think they're good people. And I've talked to some people who are alt-right who I disagree with, but I don't think they're bad people. And mm -hmm. I think they're well-intentioned. No. And, yeah. That's, def that's definitely fair. And you know, I, I know Trump got a lot of flack for saying there are group, good people on both sides in Charlottesville, but I think he was just acknowledging yeah, a, a truth there. And you know, I've spoken to, like you said, people on the left and the right, a lot of times, you know, will acknowledge the same problems. And even, you know, like if someone, um, who is, you know, on the alt left just wants to talk about, uh, you know, discrepancies in, in, you know, sentencing with racial victims and stuff like that. That, that to me, that's not an extremist position, but like you said, the fringes, the... Um, yeah, it's just like when the people get into the street battles, like mm -hmm. they're kind of the people that I'm going to back away from. You know, if you're going to show up wearing a, a, a balaclava with a skull on it and you want to jump a barrier, punch somebody in the face, if you're going to show up in all black, take a bike lock to somebody's yeah, head. Yeah, if you're like, going to LARP as, as, as a neo-Nazi, then... Uh, it, like, 
just the general LARPing, whether yes. it's Antifa or, you know, I, I don't necessarily even want to say neo-Nazi because it's just such a, becomes so complicated. But, you know, the main reason, I, when you mentioned the dorms, okay, mm -hmm. at Occupy Wall Street, they created caucuses where they actually segregated people by race. They were like the colored caucus, the black caucus, they had the women's caucus. And create, like one of the craziest things was the women's caucus was TERFs, what they call it, trans exclusionary mm -hmm. radical feminists. So they excluded trans women. So another group came up called, the, there was two women's caucuses, women's caucuses and the women's caucus with trans women. Like they had to create two different because they had different. But it was the strangest thing to me growing up as somebody with, you know, a mixed family, having friends of all different yeah. backgrounds from all over the world. It never mattered. And the people who claimed to be fighting racism were the ones who made it matter. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of like a slap in the face to me where all of a sudden I wasn't a person anymore. My opinions didn't matter. All that mattered what color my skin was and who my parents were. Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, I always considered myself very, very left. Like I grew up anarchist. It was Occupy Wall, Occupy Wall Street where I would say when I went to Occupy, I'm still very pragmatic and very kind of like, you know, keep, you know, I'll step back a little bit. But that was like a kick more to the center where I was yeah. just like... I don't, I don't know if saying that is, that's like a leftist ideology, I guess it's more of like an authoritarian mm. racist thing, but this idea that these people who walk around calling everyone racist are not racist, just it's like... It's ridiculous, and that's the thing, you know, I've had a lot of people who are on the alt-left um, criticize me, either call me alt-right, or say that I'm um, too close to it, or that I'm promoting them by, you know, talking about them, all these different things, and you know what, um... We, we, we can talk about why the alt-right's wrong, but it's it's just very disingenuous if you complain about the idea of, like, white collectivism when you're preaching black collectivism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Just, that that doesn't make sense to me. They, they uh, I think it was Richard Spencer. I'm not, I don't want to misquote anybody, but uh, someone from the alt-right was telling me that identitarians, the mm -hmm. white nationalists, they, you know, that's the same thing. They, they say they, they, it's literally the same thing as Black Lives Matter. Yeah. They're like, we just, dis like, we agree on the tenets of race and racial collectivism, I, I'm pretty sure Richard Spencer who told me if if someone can be proud of being black, if someone can be proud of being Latino, then white people should be proud of being white. And if you can yell, you know, gay pride, black pride, why can't you yell white pride? That's mm -hmm. like, I'm like, they're, they're using the same logic. And right. one's just socially unacceptable, I guess. Right, and that's why I think, honestly, uh, as much as they like to screech about them, the alt-left will not be successful in combating the alt-right ideologically because they have no sound moral or ideological footing against them because honestly they are they are both embodying the same thing. So, you know, when I have all these alt-left people complaining, I'm like, oh, you know, like, oh, it's so racist, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, but it's, it's really just what you do. <laughs> so you, you can't really fault them for doing the same thing just because they happen to be white and you're not. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't want to say again, People complain about the horseshoe theory meme, but they, they do have a lot of similarities. Have you ever seen fish hook theory? Yes, the yes, I have. It's like the, the, the far right wraps back to centrism. It's like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we've been, we've been going for a really long... This is one of the longest videos I've ever done, and this is great, by the way. So I want to... I wanna, we'll keep going, but did you hear about the comments that Trump is accused of making? I oh. don't want to swear, but he said some countries yes, were... Yes, yes, I, I, I have. holes. I, I did hear that. <laughs> Yeah, like, what do you, what do you think? I, I just saw a post on Reddit that made me just want to, like, uh, it said, it's this, like, best of, it's got gold six times, everyone's cheering for it, and someone said, you need to understand that his statement was basically saying, America is only a country for white people. Okay, yeah, so there, <laughs> with this statement, first one, I'm clear, I don't even know if I should believe it, because it was one of these, like, unnamed sources thing, um, but I have heard people talking about kind of different implications that it might mean. Some people, he was just, you know, he called this country like a shizhole. The others, there are other people out there who think that, you know, he was saying the people in that, in those countries shouldn't be allowed to come because, the, you know, racially they're worse and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, personally, if I would say that there necessarily, necessarily has a racial component to that. I It's not a leap that, that I would make. Again, wasn't there in the conversation, but I don't think, you know, calling another country that is has to be racial and frankly uh, i'm someone who very much believes that yeah there, there are other countries out there where i do not want to live i do not want to go uh you know i don't feel bad for calling a spade a spade especially when it comes to somewhere like somalia you know war-torn ravaged countries uh, at the same time i'm also someone who thinks that you know if you are a doctor from a economically or socially um a country that's having social issues, that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think you should be able to immigrate if you're, you know, if you're qualified, if you're able to come here, if you can pass a background check. I feel like you just hit the nail on the head. The, you know, calling it racist, 
isn't I, I Anderson Cooper came on CNN and said our president like he said something about like let's make no mistake about it uh, he's racist uh, Don Lemon flat out was like our president is racist yeah and I feel like that word has lost so much meaning in reality I think if that statement is true again because it's like one of these like yeah it's couple hard, people so hard to say. it and I'm just I don't have a lot of trust in the media. But if Trump did say this, I think it, it's ignorant. Mm -hmm. Because um, why why would we want people to immigrate from Haiti? Well, because they could be doctors. They could be really smart people. The, the idea that simply because the country is bad, we don't immigration is not necessarily racist. It's, it's crazy to me that racism just doesn't have any meaning anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, racism literally means a belief in racial superiority and prejudice for or against a certain race. Right. And, and people out there have been calling things like the RAISE Act racist and you know the race act is something that the trump administration has supported that it would kind of favor merit or point-based integration like we have right here in canada like we they've had for a long time in australia um apparently that's racist because non-white people aren't skilled i'm guessing is the argument they're making yeah um, but yeah it's that that word has lost pretty much all meaning and you know on, on face value i don't think it's wrong to say that other countries are you know, objectively, not a mate, like, you, you just, like, in terms of safety, socioeconomically. Um, but again, like, I don't think that should be an argument to say no immigrants from any of these places. I don't think that a country being bad should say, you should come here, like, I'm not in favor of something that says, you know, diversity lottery, because um, I think there are better ways to do things. But with that, yeah, I think it's just kind of been blown out of proportion racially. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, they're, the implication of, of Trump's intent, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like the media lays it on over and over and over again of various little little things. You know, the, the analogy I always, use, I always use is grains of sand to make a heap. Like, at what point mm -hmm. do you have a heap? And if every little thing Trump does is racist, then eventually they, they say, like, oh, there it is. It's definitive. Now, I'm not going to say Trump isn't racist, right? Because personally, I don't know. You mm -hmm. know, I don't know what Trump does or does not believe. The implication that he's calling these countries shizzles uh, is, that, is, is the, the reporters, is right. Anderson Cooper, is Don Lemon saying they understand Trump's intention beyond mm -hmm. what he said. And look, I, it's, no, it's no secret that I'm, a huge, I'm not a huge fan of Trump, but I'm just really skeptical of people who jump right up and just drop this, the R-bomb, you know, like, yeah. you're racist, you're a Nazi. Someone posted something saying, like, the White House will, like, uh, clan shirts and hoods in the Oval Office because of this and stuff. I think the statement was, if it's true, even, uh, would be ignorant. But, man, it's mind-blowing how... Everything is just to the umpteenth degree, you know? Right. And what, what I thought was strange is that after this, there were all these people who came out and said things like, you know, diversity is, is our strength and stuff like that. And, like, to me, you don't need to say diversity is our strength to say that I'm fine with having a Haitian immigrant, right? Because, I mean, like, you don't... Haitians, Haitian immigrants can get in through other ways aside from diversity, right? Like, you know, I, I'm pretty sure, like, all these Haitian doctors would just hear you talk about diversity and think, okay, I actually have a, a degree in, in a professional field. But, you know, yeah. nice to know that I, I look I a way that you approve of. That's what bothers me with, like, my heritage, is this idea, like, at Occupy Wall Street, I actually had people tell me, there's, there's the one story I always tell people, they, there was an argument between a white guy and a black guy, and they were both telling me I was wrong. I didn't understand what they were talking about. And, you know, affirmative action, these things are more... I'm not, I'm not even, like, staunchly opposed to affirmative action, per se. I was just arguing against some of their more extreme points, because I'm relatively neutral. And then once I said... They were like, you're white, you'll never understand. And I said, actually, I'm mixed. They actually apologized to me. Wow. They were like, oh... Like, it was more so the oh, white guy. Oh, like, your, your, your opinion matters oh, more now. exactly. He went, yeah. oh... Now I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. And I'm like... It's patronizing. It is. It is. Yeah. I was like, you don't value my ideas. You only value my skin color. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not cool with that. Yeah, All and right. I've, I've had people do the same thing with me. Because if you're white passing POC, it's different than yeah. being a regular POC. WP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've been going for about 40 minutes. This has been a lot of fun. But I think we should we should bring it to an end. Is there any final thoughts you want to say? Anything? Um, not much. I'm just again happy that you came out here, and I think um, what what both of us would like to see is just more open conversations and a little bit less of a keenness to punch people you don't agree with. <laughs> Label them yeah, things seriously. like neo Nazi when they're not. Just yeah. yeah. And do uh, you want your Twitter and your YouTube? Sure. Yeah. So my Twitter is at roaming mill, and mill is just M I L because. Millennial is too long for Twitter. Um, I'm, I pretty much live on there now. And uh, on YouTube, Roaming Millennial as well is where I post videos. Awesome. So thank you all so much for hanging out. I'm, I'm basically experimenting. I said, I, I just figured I'd let this one go as long as I could. And we're at like 40 minutes. We probably could have gone a lot longer, but maybe 40 minutes is good. So if you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter at TimCast. Thanks for hanging out as long as you did. 
If you want to support my work, go to timcast.com forward slash donate. Give whatever you'd like or give nothing. Your, these videos are always free, but your donations help sustain my work and allow me to continue doing what I do, so it's always greatly appreciated. Again, thanks for hanging out, and I will see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Thank you.